Hi, my name is Andrew Dobis, and I'm a master's student in computer science at ETH Zurich. Today, I'm here to present Chisel Verify, which is a hardware verification library for Chisel. I worked on this project along with Chark Peterson, Hans Damsgold, Kaspar Hesse, Enrico Torotto, Simon Anderson, and Martin Schurbel over at the Technical University of Denmark, as well as Richard Lynn from UC Berkeley. Let's start by giving a brief overview of the presentation. First off, I'm going to introduce the necessary background needed for our work. Then I'll move on to discussing the current solutions when it comes to verifying the chisel design, which will then lead to the motivation behind our work. Finally, I'll present our solution for verification in chisel and evaluate it by comparing it to a common, a common standardized verification methodology named UVM. Let's now present the necessary background for our work. Let's start by setting what we consider as verification of digital systems. Verification relates to the testing of a design before it has been taped out. But more specifically, verifying a design means guaranteeing that the expected features, as described in the specification, have been correctly implemented and have the correct behavior. In other words, verification tools are what allow us to verify that the tests we are writing test the right things. Let's now talk about the Universal Verification Methodology, or UVM. This is a standardized method for writing tests in System Verilog and allows one to write reusable test benches. This is actually one of the most common verification methodologies used today. Now let's describe the different ver verification tools that exist. First, there's functional coverage, which is a qualitative and fine-grained coverage metric. This means that, in contrast to, quantitative me to a quantitative metric, functional coverage will give the user progress information about the specific features that they are testing, rather than, for example, an amount of code being tested. So this is why we call it qualitative. Another important tool is Constrained Random Verification, or CRV. This enables the creation of random variables which generate values that satisfy a set of constraints. With CRV, one can write relatively simple test cases capable of covering many of the device under test, or DUT's, functionalities, thanks to well-driven valid inputs. So finally, let's present the environment we'll be working in, which is Chisel. Chisel is a hardware construction language embedded in Scala, which allows for object-oriented and functional programming to be used in the scope of digital design. Chisel works by compiling either to an intermediate representation called Fertile, which can then be simulated using an execution engine like Treadle, or all the way to Verilog. The output Verilog can then be simulated using any Verilog simulator, for example, Verilator, or it can be synthesized. This now brings us to the current solutions for verifying Chisel designs. Chisel designs can be tested using essentially two main approaches, either testing the chisel code and testing the, or testing the output Verilog. When it comes to testing the chisel code, we mostly have two main options. Chisel test, which is great for more like traditional test benches that rely on setting inputs and comparing outputs to the golden model. Or Scala test, which is a really just like a Scala testing framework. So it allows us to test chisel code as if it was Scala software, so it's a very surface-level testing framework for Chisel. Now when it comes to testing the output Verilog description, we have a couple more powerful options, such as System Verilog, which is an object-oriented, non-synthesizable extension to Verilog, or UVM, which we presented earlier. So other solutions do exist, like RFUS or Chisel Formal, but they mostly don't cover functionalities that we're trying to achieve in our solution. So the current solution, but the current solutions do work. They can definitely be improved upon, however. Chisel test for starters doesn't really have any verification functionalities, i.e. ways to guarantee the correctness of a test. It's also lacking in automated testing capabilities. System Verilog with UVM, however, does propose these missing functionalities, but has the problem of being extremely verbose and requires us to rely on multiple languages in order to test our design, which isn't ideal. This brings us to the motivation behind our work. So far, Chisel doesn't have any native tools that allow the easy use of verification functionalities. All existing tools require the use of different languages or tools external to the Chisel Scala ecosystem. Our goal is to provide Chisel with tools that are specifically tailored to the language, efficient to use and easy to learn. This is not currently the case of the most popular solution, which is System Verilog with UVM. 
It's now time to present Chisel Verify, which is our solution to Chisel's lack of verification functionalities. Chisel Verify is an extension of Chisel Test, which fills in the existing holes that the framework has in terms of verification features. This includes enabling functional coverage, constrained random verification, bus functional models, and timed assertions. This not only adds functionalities from System Verilog that were missing in Chisel Test, but also improves upon them, enabling features like timing related assertions or coverage as well as purely conditional coverage constructs. Let's dive straight into it and start by talking about functional coverage with Chisel Verify. So functional coverage consists of defining what's called a verification plan, which is the representation of our DUT's expected behavior. This is then sampled throughout a test suite to gather coverage information that is then compiled into a coverage reporter. So a verification plan consists of a set of cover groups which themselves consist of cover points, which each contain bins. A cover point's coverage percentage is then defined by the amount of hits each bin gets. You can read our papers for more detail about the characteristics around our cover constructs and bins. So let's now have a look at how all of this works. So the two main elements, there's the coverage database, which stores all of the bin hit value mappings, and then there's the coverage reporter, which manages the database, registers the verification plan, and accesses the DUT when needed. This is what we'll be using to create our verification plan. Let's now look at how to use our functional coverage tool. So the API consists of two main elements. First, cover construct constructs. They represent a feature of the DUT. These can be defined either by a single or by multiple DUT ports. The behavior is then defined by the bins it contains. Then let's move on to bins themselves. They represent the definition of a part of a feature, specifically a certain behavior that a DUT port is expected to have. These are defined using value ranges or conditions and can contain timing information. Now let's use these elements together in an example. So first, we start by creating a coverage reporter, and then we can define our verification plan using its register method. Once the verification plan is defined, we can start writing our normal chisel test test bench and call our coverage reporter's sample method whenever our cover points are updated, so usually every cycle. So once all of this is done, we can generate our report and create a user-readable version using the serialized method, as is shown here in this slide. This will result in something looking like this. So here we can see the different elements that our coverage report contains. So we have cover points related to names that contain bins that are also related to names but are also related to ranges or conditions that contain a certain amount of hits and a coverage percentage. So we can get all of this information directly out of the report without having to serialize it. So this can be practical for automated testing. So that's enough for coverage. Let's move on to constrained random verification. The idea here is to automate your tests by using constraint-driven randomized inputs. This means that we can give our DUT random inputs that are more meaningful than simply using uniform randomness. To enable this in Scala, we developed a constraint programming language, allowing the definition of random objects containing random variables and constraints. These random objects define what's called a constraint satisfaction problem, which is then solved using an existing CSP solver named Jakob. So to define a random object, you have to create a Scala class that extends the rand trait, all while giving it a model that is used as a database for the random generation. You can then define random variables or randvar fields inside setClass using the rand function. These random variables are, can either be cyclic, meaning that they can't take the same value twice, or non-cyclic, meaning that they can. Constraints can then be defined either by using single constraints or constraint blocks, as is shown in this example at the very bottom. So a constraint block or a constraint group is actually just a set of constraints that are all mapped to the same variable. So these are either activated or deactivated all together and cannot be done, uh, and cannot be activated or deactivated 
uh, singly. So here's the list of the different constraint operators that you can use. I won't go too much into detail since they're all well documented in our repository's wiki. So one can define conditional constraints, which only consider a constraint if a given condition is met. These are created using if con or else c constructs. Once all of the conditions and random variables are defined, we need to instantiate our random object inside of our test and then randomize it in order to get new values in each of our random variables. This is shown right here in this example at the very, at the very bottom. I forgot to mention that there's also the dist operator, which allows us to create specific distributions by giving weights to different ranges. This is very practical when we only want to uh, define our random variables using distributions that aren't uniform. So of course it's possible to define an unsolvable CSP in a random object, which is why the randomize method returns a boolean, telling us whether or not the constraints were solvable, which is why in this example we have an assertion wrapped around the randomize object to make sure that our CSP, our CSP was solvable. Let's briefly talk about an example bus functional model, or BFM, we added to our library. So the idea behind BFMs is to create an abstraction of the inner workings of a standardized interface in order to simplify writing test benches. This means that rather than dealing with each individual signal in a standardized interface, we can simply work with transactions instead. As an example of this, we choose to, def we choose to develop a BFM for the AXI4 interface. So AXI4 is an interface containing three write channels and two read channels each channel having its own ready valid interface. You thus end up with 25 signals to handle for write and 20 for read. So instead of that, we can define a functional manager, which allows us to use a read transaction and a write transaction to communicate via the AXI interface. All of the inner workings are then handled by the BFM itself. So the idea here is to use this as an example for any other BFMs that we would want to create. You don't always have to work with an AXI interface. The goal is to base yourself off of this to create functional models for other standardized interfaces. Finally, let's quickly talk about timed assertions. These allow to create predicated assertions that take into account certain timing delays. These delays can be defined using different types of delays. So for example, Given a delay of x cycles, an exactly delay defines an assertion that is true in only x cycles. An eventually de delay checks if an assertion is true at least once in the next x cycles. An always delay checks in if an assertion is true every cycle for the next x cycles. And a never delay checks that an assertion isn't true at any cycle for the next x cycles. So the interface is inspired by Scala tests eventually method. Here, we can call the assertion method by using their timing type as the function. As for the parameters, D is the delay in cycles, MSG is the assertion error message, and CUND is the function we're going to check. And this CUND is given as a lambda, of course. And the DUT must implicitly be defined somewhere in the test, which is what this implicit DUT argument means. So evaluation and conclusion. So that's what the current state of Chisel Verify looks like. Chisel Verify brings hardware verification to the Chisel Scala ecosystem. As you might have noticed during the presentation, the syntax used by Chisel Verify is a lot more efficient and lightweight than using System Verilog with UVM. So this is demonstrated by testing a min heap queue, both with Chisel Verify and with UVM, and comparing the number of lines of code, LOC, needed to achieve the same functionality. For example, the functional coverage was gathered using only 24 lines of Chisel Verify code, but using 94 lines of UVM code. So this is only counting the UVM subscriber and not all of the UVM structural code. The UVM subscriber is actually the code that contains the functional coverage definition. And so the big difference between Chisel Verify and UVM is that we only need the definition of the verification plan and nothing else. 
while UVM needs all of this fancy structure going around that makes all of the test benches reusable. So on top of that, Chisel Verify provides a more, more modern features that aren't present in System Verilog, such as timing-based verification and purely conditional coverage. We also want to add that Chisel Verify can be used to verify non-Chisel designs as well, thanks to Chisel's blackboxing features. So that's it for my presentation. Here are a few references to the main work that was inspired that inspired Chisel Verify. And of course, this project is fully open source and can be found on GitHub. If you want to get started using our library, the best way is by checking out our detailed wiki, which contains an in-depth tutorial on how to use the different functionalities proposed by our library. Chisel Verify is also published on Maven, so you can use it without a problem by adding a single line to your project's SBT file. So thank you very much for listening, and now, are there any questions?